On a beautiful June day in 1913, Emily Wilding Davison was just another face in the crowd at the Epsom Derby. By that evening, she was infamous. The image of her colliding with the King's horse and tumbling through the air was already showing in London cinemas. It's time to see if the forensics team have uncovered anything new. I'm watching her. And as she goes, wow, oh my word. That is an amazing angle. You can see so much more there, because if you just watch her, just go back a bit, just go back a bit. I thought the horse couldn't see her because she was right in front of it. In fact, she's just to the right and he, I think he tries to jump her. He pricks his ears and you watch his front feet come off, off the ground. Do you yeah. see? Oh. He's actually yeah. trying to jump her. For 100 years, the received view in the horse racing world has been that it was complete chance that Emily collided with the King's horse. But using the three camera angles, the team has pinpointed Emily's position on the course. Remarkably, it's much closer to the start of the bend than has always been accepted. This introduces an intriguing possibility, that Emily did have a clear view of the runners. What's her line of vision to Anna, the King's horse? We think it's, it's quite substantial. That's why we believe she has actually targeted the King's horse quite clearly. Emily had only four seconds between ducking under the rail and being bowled over. Was that enough time to identify the king's colours? That's obviously when the first time the camera uh -huh. see the horse, but if you watch when Emily ducks, I think that's probably the first time she could actually have a, a clear line of sight. Uh -huh. She absolutely worked out the place on the course to suit her needs the best, but also to have all the cameras on her. She was in absolutely the right position to do what she intended to do. The restored footage shows that she is holding something. And you can see she's got something in her hands. She's lifting it up. She's wanting to show something. And she's just caught at the one angle that would bring the horse down and give her injuries that were ultimately fatal. Emily was taken to the cottage hospital in Epsom. She never came out of the coma into which she had fallen, and she died four days later. The coroner's verdict was accidental death. It seems to me she wasn't trying to bring down the king's horse at all. She was hoping to attach something to it, what appears to be a scarf. But there is one thing that may just be the object Emily had in her hand. Is this actually it? Yes. I bought it at auction. It was up for sale at Sotheby's. And it belonged to Frances Annie Burton, who says her father was a clerk of the course at Epsom on that day. He ran onto the course, and lying close by her was the sash. So he picked it up and put it in his pocket. It didn't come to light until it was sold to pay nursing home fees. You can actually see she's got it grasped in her left hand here, look. Yeah. Because I think it was folded then, because it's a very fine scarf and it's silk. So if she did that with it, as yes. you did that sash, it would, it would unfurl. And that she waited for the king's racehorse because she wanted the king's horse to go past um, the winning post wearing the votes for women colours and it would have been a great publicity stunt. Because she's standing determined. She does not look like a woman about to kill herself, let's face it. Oh, no, no, no. And, Absolutely and the... not. What I do feel is that she misjudged it and didn't realise how fast a moving horse is actually going. <laughs> 